top of the morning to you. I'm Mr. Ben, and welcome to another edition of Know Your History. Today we're going to be talking about Irish Tom Sweeney and the Intelligent Whale and its connection with New Jersey. Now, uh, Irish Tom, Tom Sweeney was born in County Cork, Ireland, a Christmas Day, 1820. And when he was 12 years old, he came to America with his widowed mother and settled in New York. He got involved in the local militia, and by the time of the Mexican-American War in 1846, he had volunteered with the uh, Second New York Company A, and uh, he fought at uh, various battles under Winfield Scott in uh, Mexico and was wounded at the ba Battle of Cerro Gordo, uh, shot in the groin, ouch, and uh, he recovered and uh, at his next battle was shot severe, uh, severely wounded in the arm at uh, uh, Churubusco and it necessitated the amputation of his right arm. It was said that um, Tom Sweeney, one-armed Tom Sweeney, spoke three languages, English, Irish-American, and profane. And uh, he had quite a reputation. As I said, he was known as Fighting Tom. Now, uh, Tom Sweeney uh, remained in the Army. He was commissioned to second lieutenant, uh, and he uh, fought Native Americans in the Southwest. Um, and this is a, a photograph of him when he uh, during the Civil War. And uh, when the Civil War started, uh, he stayed in the Army, and uh, he was in uh, command of an arsenal in St. Louis, Missouri. And when the secessionists, uh, the Southerners, demanded that he sur surrender, turn over the keys to the arsenal, he said he would rather blow it up with him in it than uh, surrender the arsenal. So um, that he didn't uh, surrender. Fortunately, he didn't have to blow himself up either. Uh, he did fight in several major battles in the Civil War. Uh, Civil War, Wilson's Creek. Uh, in 1861, where he was wounded. Uh, he fought uh, at the Battle of Fort Donaldson. He also fought at the Battle of Shiloh, where he was wounded yet again three times. He was shot in the leg, and he was uh, shot twice in his one good arm. Uh, th this man's running out of body parts. Um, fortunately, uh, he did not have to uh, suffer another amputation, and uh, he went on to... Um, command uh, a brigade. Well, he was colonel of the uh, 52nd Illinois, and then he was given brigade command. And by the time of the Atlanta campaign in 1864, uh, General Tom Sweeney is in um, uh, uh, command of a division in the 16th Corps. Unfortunately, he clashed with this man, uh, his superior officer, the Corps commander, uh, General Grenville Dodge. And in fact, they got into a fist fight. Now, if you can imagine, how, how does that work with, you know, one arm uh, fighting fist fight? But uh, Sweeney was arrested, brought up on charges and um, court-martialed. However, he was acquitted, uh, but uh, he was not given any more uh, important commands. And then the war ended. Um, he was uh, dismissed from the army. For being AWOL, uh, absent without leave. Uh, and when in 1866, after the Civil War, he became involved with the Fenian Brotherhood. Now, the Fenian Brotherhood, Brotherhood was an organization devoted to uh, overthrowing British rule in Ireland. And this is their banner, one of their banners, which more lo looks like the Fenian Sisterhood, actually. But the uh, Fenian Brotherhood, along with uh, Tom Sweeney, decided that the first step to liberating Ireland was to invade Canada. And uh, it turned out to be somewhat of a fiasco. And um, Sweeney was arrested by the United States government, uh, incarcerated briefly, and then released. It was about this time that Sweeney gets involved with the submarine known as the Intelligent Whale. Oh, you haven't heard of the Intelligent Whale? Well, uh, you probably heard of this submarine, right? Everybody knows the story. 
Well, nearly everyone knows the story of the CSS Hunley, the Confederate submarine, the only truly successful submarine. Now, it's kind of a qualified success because uh, they lost two eight-man crews in trials uh, of the submarine, of the Hunley, and when the Hunley succeeded in sinking the USS Housatonic off the Charleston Bar in South Carolina, this is the Housatonic, went down, uh, a third crew was lost, and uh, the submarine was not recovered until uh, 1995. And uh, for a long time, people speculated what had become of it, and they did find it. And um, the men were still, the hand-cranked submarine were still at the crank. Uh, General Beauregard um, once said that the submarine was more dangerous to its owners or operators than it was to the enemy. Now, what uh, a lot of people don't know is that the Union Navy also had submarines, and uh, one was called the USS Alligator, which went down in a storm off of uh, Cape Hatteras. It was being towed to Charleston, South Carolina for operations there, uh, but she sank uh, without anybody on board, um, and it's very near the spot where the... Um, uh, the USS Monitor went down, the graveyard of the Atlantic, so-called. The other submarine that I wanted to talk to you about is the Intelligent Whale. And this is a photograph of the actual submarine that's sitting in a warehouse in a building in Seagirt, New Jersey, the National uh, Guard Museum in Seagirt. And uh, she is almost 30 feet long, 28 feet, 8 inches to be exact, weighed 46 tons, and uh, she could stay down. She had two uh, canist huge tanks of compressed air, and she could stay down for 10 hours, underwater for 10 hours, supposedly, and uh, she also was propelled by four men cranking the propeller. Um, she could be operated by four men, but you could actually have fit 13 men in there uh, at one time. Somewhat claustrophobic. And you can see, by the way, these photographs were taken by my friend Bill Myers. Shout out to Bill when we went to see this thing a couple of years ago. And uh, he took some nice photographs. And here is the interior of the submarine. You can stick your head in there, but if, you know, I wouldn't, if you're over five feet tall, um, I wouldn't recommend it climbing up in there. Um, here you have, um, I believe this is looking towards the bow, and you have the uh, skylight where it would aid in light and navigation, and uh, they usually navigated by compass under the water uh, when they could water was murky or was deep. Now a lot of people think this submarine, oh here's another photograph of the interior, a lot of people think it was uh, developed after the Civil War, but actually she was operational in 1864. And uh, uh, there was, it was tied up in some litigation. And it never, by the time it was ready uh, to, uh, um, this man who owned it wanted to use it, sell it to the United States Navy and use it to clear the obstructions uh, in the James River. However, the war ended and uh, without employing the uh, the intelligent whale against the Confederates. Now, in 1866, the war is over, and Tom Sweeney decides, and I believe that he was, um, these quasi-unofficial uh, trials, um, you know, I think he was looking to purchase the uh, intelligent whale for operations against the British and liberating Ireland. I'm not certain of that. But um, right after the uh, disaster in Canada, he starts looking at the submarine, and he takes it out for a spin. He and two other gentlemen, they take the intelligent whale out. Now, the, the intelligent whale, you would don this uh, diving suit with um, the hard uh, helmet and go out uh, tethered to the submarine, and you would uh, take a mine with you. They called it a torpedo, but we would know it, know it as an underwater mine. And Sweeney actually did this uh, through a wooden gate in the bottom of the submarine. You could uh, descend and uh, go up and um, 
actually walk over to the, what he did was he attached it to a scowl, an old flat bottom scowl, and uh, went, went back to the uh, intelligent whale, and they pulled a lanyard and blew up the scowl. So it was a successful test, and that's what it was designed to do. Um, amazing technology for the uh, Civil War era. Now, enter this man. Well, actually, he was the owner. Uh, he was major stockholder in the American Submarine Company, and his name was Oliver Pett Halstead. His uh, nickname was Pett Halstead, and he was somewhat of a shady character. He was a lawyer, uh, a lobbyist, and he knew the Lincolns, actually, and he uh, sold arms to the Union Army, and he wanted to sell the intelligent whale to the United States Navy. And I believe at this point, um, Sweeney loses interest, or he decides not to purchase the intelligent whale, and Halstead talks the Navy into buying this thing. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, Halstead, who has uh, intimate knowledge of this uh, submarine, the intelligent whale, Unfortunately, Halstead is uh, murdered. He's involved in a love triangle. Uh, he has a wife and six children, but uh, he also has a mistress. And the mistress's ex-lover uh, catches uh, Sweeney and um, this Mrs. Wilson, and uh, he um, shoots Pet Halstead, Oliver Halstead, and he dies. So unfortunately, with his demise, uh, the person who knows most about this uh, sub is gone. And when the Navy, the Navy bought it on the contingent, there would be more successful trials. And uh, what happens is the, they take it out. Um, it leaks badly. It gets stuck under a derrick. Uh, and they have to, uh, the men almost drown. Um, now, one contemporary newspaper account says that 39 men were lost in trials of this uh, intelligent whale. Uh, but then another account I read said that there were none, uh, no men were lost in the trials. But for whatever reason, the Navy decides they're not interested. So they canceled their contract. They only made the one payment. They were buying it for $50,000. And uh, they say, no thanks. In fact, they decide not to uh, develop submarines, they're just too dangerous um, and impractical. So it wouldn't be until 1900 that the Navy, U.S. Navy, actually has an operating submarine that was invented uh, by a man named Holland, who was also an Irishman, interestingly enough, who also planned to use it against the British to liberate Ireland, but instead he sold it to the U.S. Navy. And um, that, that uh, sub was called the USS Holland in his honor in 1900. <clears throat> now, this um, intelligent whale sat for nearly 100 years at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And by the way, I should have mentioned that all those tests that Sweeney and others were uh, conducting was in Newark Bay. Halstead, as I mentioned, the guy who was murdered, he used to take his family out for outings in the Passaic River, supposedly, and, uh, you know, just for a pleasure cruise. Um, but anyway, once he was lost, the intelligent whale uh, languished. Uh, amazing it was that sold for uh, scrap iron. And for years and years, it was at the Brooklyn Navy Yard until 1999, when it was taken to um, this museum, National Guard Museum at Seagirt, New Jersey. Now, this is called, this vessel, the intelligent whale. But I ask you, uh, considering its uh, many mishaps, which is really the intelligent whale? This thing or the mammal with the largest brain on Earth? Uh, I don't know about you, but my money is on the whale. Now, Sweeney um, was, uh, incredibly enough, was reinstated by the Army. Uh, he must have had some powerful friends. Or maybe it was just the luck of the Irish. But he was reinstated as a Brigadier General in the U.S. Army, in the regular Army, and he um, retired. And uh, he died in 1892. He lived in um, Astoria, Long Island, 
And when he passed, um, he was buried in Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn. And there's a photograph of his tombstone. So that was an interesting story of Irish Tom Sweeney, or Fighting Tom, as he uh, came to be known, and the Intelligent Whale. Well, I hope you've uh, found it interesting, and um, I hope to see you next time. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day, but remember, don't drink one too many. Those shamrock shakes can be very filling. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Know Your History.